Indiana head swimming coach and Team USA assistant women's coach Ray Luz. Well, I'll be honest, I never thought I'd be at a press conference in Hanky Hall. But uh, I really want to thank my wife and my two children, Bryce and Mackenzie, for being here. Without my wife, Candace, I don't get to do this at all. Um, it is just a thrill for all of us uh, to be going to the Olympics. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's feet have hit the ground necessarily, but, you know, we definitely know what's coming. We're 25 days out, and uh, this has just been wonderful to be a part of, to have, uh, I think, 11 uh, swimming and diving athletes going and two coaches. Um, it's been a long time coming for this program. It's been since, uh, I believe, 1976, um, since we've had such a, a comprehensive group and, and a good group, a group that has a chance to do some very special things in Rio and uh, I couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of it. And I want to thank our administration, Scott Burns, uh, Eric Newberger, our sport administrator, Fred Glass, and really the, in the entire uh, team, because the culture is what really makes something like this go. But without the student athletes, uh, you know, we're not doing any of this. But uh, I'd like to introduce the Olympians that we have here. Now we've got everybody in town except for Anje Tavkar, and he is already in Europe uh, preparing for the Olympics, and uh, he's with their national team presently. So he's not in the United States, but just to maybe start over here, we'll start with Blake Peroni. If you could raise your hand, Blake. Uh, <clears throat> Blake is from Chesterton, Indiana, and he will be a part of the men's 4x100 freestyle relay. And uh, right now he's a relay alternate, so he will be guaranteed to swim in the preliminaries with the hope that he will go fast enough to uh, be able to swim in the finals as well. Uh, next we have Lily King. She's from Evansville, Indiana. She'll be swimming the 100 breast and the 200 breast and the 400 medley relay. And then we have Kennedy Goss here. She'll be, she'll be representing Canada, and she'll be a part of the 800 freestyle relay. And uh, she comes, you know, she, she comes in a line of Olympians. Her father was a two-time silver medalist for Canada in 88, or sorry, 84 and 88. So I know it's real special for her family that she's uh, an Olympian. Then we have uh, Cody Miller here. And uh, Cody will be swimming the 100 breaststroke and the 400 medley relay. And Cody comes from Las Vegas, Nevada, and has been here, I believe, seven years now. He's in his seventh year in the program, <laughs> and uh, he's our grizzled veteran. But, you know, Cody, Cody was one of our first top-level recruits and has led to a lot of these other swimmers being here, both men and women. And then we have Ali Kalafala from Cairo, Egypt. Ali will be swimming the 50 freestyle. And, uh, and possibly the 100, but we're only certain of the 50 freestyle right now. And uh, Ali has improved, you know, maybe as much as anybody in the program, all the way to getting his FINA A cut down in Orlando in February. And he did that in between the Big Ten and the NCAA meets, which is no easy task. But he was a man not to be denied. And uh, beyond Ali, we have another Egyptian Olympian, a transfer, Marwan El Kamash. He will be joining us uh, this fall. And he is uh, training in Florida right now, getting ready for Rio. So uh, the, uh, the swimmers will head back to their tables, and you can, you can talk to them when we're, we're all wrapped up here. Thank you. Well, you know, as the Warriors say, strength in numbers. And to have this many people going, it gives you a chance to, to do something. And, you know, they're, they're fairly well ranked in the world. So, you know, we're going in, um, you know, with a chance to do some good stuff beyond just having 11 people. They, they have a chance to do some special stuff. And that's, that's kind of the main thing now. And we're, we're trying to stay really focused on doing better once we get to Rio. And... Uh, you know, and that'll be going up against the best in the world. So, you know, that'll be a challenge, but I think we're up for it. 
Sir, what's the, uh, what is the key in order to do well in these Olympics and, and obviously in the next couple of weeks preparation? Again. You know, the key right now is for these guys to, uh, to not get too, to not sp get too spread thin. So, you know, one of the, the important things with the media was to, to do one day so that we can kind of keep the rest schedule and the training as normal as possible. And when we had the United States uh, Olympic team meetings, they, you know, Phelps' coach, Bob Bowman, said, you need to keep it simple and you need to say no to family, friends, people that come out of the woodwork. Um, you know, I've got friends on Facebook I didn't know I had. And, and I'm just a coach. You know, I'm not even, you know, putting on a Speedo. And I can only imagine for them, you know, it must be pretty crazy. So just trying to keep it simple. It's, in essence, it's another meet. It's a big meet, but it's, it's still another meet. And you gotta, you gotta keep things as normal as possible. I think her chances are good. Um, Lily's, Lily's a, a good swimmer, and, uh, but one of her better traits is she's, she's a competitor. Um, and I think a lot of our, our athletes have learned a lot about how important confidence is. And Lily, Lily is a very confident person. You know, she, she expects to do well. And having that kind of just natural born optimism, uh, going in thinking you're gonna be successful, that's the most important thing at the highest level is getting to that point mentally where you know you 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 believe in yourself. Now anything can happen once you get in a, in a in a race, but she's her best attribute is her confidence. Did you expect Lily to be this good this quickly? I predicted it all. <laughs> no, you know you ne you never know. Um, she she had some really good uh, attributes, but for a variety of reasons, you know, um, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't fully developed until she, you know, until she got the chance to, you know, do the kind of stuff that we do. L Lily was a good opportunity for us to start at a higher level, just like Cody Miller was, Kennedy Goss, you know, we're really good developers of talent, but we, you know, in, in the, in many of the cases that, you know, of the kids sitting in back here, it was to do it at a higher level. Like Blake came in as one of the better swimmers coming out as well, you know, and two years later he's on the Olympic team. So um, I knew there was a chance to do some, some really good stuff and the timing was, was right, you know, being in the Olympic year. You were talking a little bit earlier about not spreading the swimmers. You know, that physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, coming off the U.S. trials, that, that's a tough meet. And, um, and you just gotta, you gotta get back into kind of the normal swing of things. So it's important uh, just not to let people, you know, get spread thin as far as their, their energy level goes, because you only have so much. You know, like for example, when Lily went out to eat, um, at the trials, we learned right off the bat that she needed some some help to get to dinner because she had to go out in public. And um, you know, if you win, you know, if some of these kids win medals in the Olympics, life's going to change. You know, it's already changed for them being Olympians in a, in a big way. But if you if you win Olympic medals, it really changes because that's the pinnacle for our sport. So just trying to anticipate some of those things and do a good job of managing it. So, you know, everybody that's, you know, here can go to Rio and have a great chance of success. That, that's my job. You mentioned timing as, as such a big thing, and especially, you know, maybe in, in the past few years you've had some swimmers who, who you thought were up to the challenge, but, you know, how difficult is it to, to kind of measure, you know, you only get your chances every four years to do something like this to reach the pinnacle? You know, timing's everything in life. And, uh, you know, the Olympic years are always special, but, you know, there's a lot of people that just came out of the U.S. trials that got third place and did the third or fourth best time in the world. So you, you never know who's going to come along at, at what time. And, uh, you know, these guys showed up and did it when they had to.
So, you know, they're pretty good, you know, at, at kind of staying present and, you know, not, let, not letting things kind of, you know, get too big, not, not letting the moment get away from them. And, um, you know, we just talk about trying to have fun and, and do, do what we need to do in practice so that when we go to a competition, be it the Olympic Games or, or an Olympic trial meet, even NCAAs, we, we can be at peace and know, hey, I'm not, it's just time to race now. Ray, are there specific problems for the U.S. team because it has shorter time between trials and Olympics, challenges in building up yardage and then the table? That's a good question. Uh, the U.S. picks their team last, basically, of any country in the world. And we do that because it's, we've had our best results that way. And a lot of these kids came up through the NCAA system where you do a conference meet and then four weeks later you do NCAAs. And I think we have the NCAA here. And to me, it's the best system between ages 18 and 22 to hone your skills. And so the United States tries to, t tries to mimic that to the best of our ability. So when I swam in the 90s, we used to pick our team in March. And we, 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 we had a lot, you know, a, a lot you know, weaker results as a country as a result. So this, by waiting as close to the games as possible, allows you to pick your best team now. If you were to pick it six months before or a year before, a lot can change. Injuries or, you know, some, some things in training that are, are not necessarily positive. So this allows you to bring the best people now. Ray, how concerning is it there's some of the issues in Brazil with mosquitoes, virus, everything, all that, how concerning is that to keep your athletes healthy, ready to go? Well, you definitely want them to be healthy. Um, and I was just in Brazil two months ago with Vinny Lanza, one of our, our, our male swimmers, and uh, I felt perfectly safe. And I was there in their summer. Uh, there's no, there were no mosquitoes um, during the day. Um, it's in the tropics, so the sun goes down in about 10 minutes. And when the sun goes down, the mosquitoes come out. But if you wore bug spray, you, you don't get stung. And I was on a bus with hundreds of mosquitoes, and I thought to myself, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen right now. And I, and I didn't get stung. You know, so if you wear bug spray, which we've all been given a duffel bag worth of it, um, you know, you'll, you should be just fine. I mean, I, you cannot get stung if you, if, you, if you plan a little bit ahead. It's like wearing sunscreen to prevent sunburn. So I, I'm not as concerned because I think we got a good plan. But, you know, the U.S. team was going to, you know, we have two training camps. We leave tomorrow for San Antonio, and then we were going to go to Puerto Rico, and we switched it to uh, Atlanta. So the second training camp is going to be here just because there was a Zika concern. But I was just talking to a recruit that I've got in Puerto Rico, and he said, I know of no person in Puerto Rico that's got Zika. So they were kind of disappointed we, we canceled that. But I think we've taken every precaution you could, you could imagine, at least on the U.S. front. When you look at uh, Cody and you kind of consider his size and some of the physical things he's had to overcome, what's made him so effective in that uh, breaststroke? Uh, Cody is tough. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a guy with a chip on his shoulder. And... Um, you know, we, we talked a little about making sure that that chip remained there. And, uh, you know, because he's had a lot of success, especially in the last year to two years. Uh, but I, I honestly, in a weird way, I think some of the things that people may look at with Cody, his size or his sunken chest or, you know, his personality. Um, just kidding. Uh, you know, I think that those are his strongest attributes. And... Um, you know, and he's, he's, he's blazed a lot of trails for people here. You know, he's, he never misses practice. And we talk about that a lot, and it's a simple statistic, but the guy never misses practice. And you start adding that up over time, and, you know, he's, he's not had a huge breakthroughs, but just steady progress. And he's just a, a great example of what can happen if you just, you know, if you have that, that longer-term approach. Talked about excuse me, timing and, and it, the Olympic years in particular. How do you use that for swimmers that you know might have a chance to to reach that milestone during a season? Do you 
use it as motivation? Do you want them to put it out of their minds? Do you maybe get them to a point where they can use it as motivation? You know, I personally, having done this as an athlete, I try not to talk about the Olympics a lot. I, I avoid it unless it has to be discussed. So um, I just think, you know, that when somebody gets to a certain world ranking, they know that they can make an Olympic team. And, you know, like when Kennedy went up there, up to Canada in April, you know, she knew. We don't need to talk about it. We just wanted to make sure she was comfortable, had good coaching and great preparation. And, you know, they, they understand what's at stake. And I think if you can reduce stress and pressure, uh, that's kind of our job as coaches. So, you know, we, we'll talk about it maybe once, twice a season. And, um, you know, just with the kids back here, you know, we're just going to reset goals at some point, especially the people that just made the Olympic team for the U.S. Like Blake has already come in and reset goals, and we're going to do that for the, for the other two as well. But maybe not talk about, you know, the Olympics. Do you think it's tougher or more impressive that she was kind of able to get there herself? I think it's harder for somebody that's had a parent, you know, win an Olympic medal. Um, but, you know, Kennedy, one of the things that I think helped her was, uh, you know, she made the world championships last summer, which was great experience. But, you know, she wasn't able to be to make the, the Pan American Games, which was hosted in Canada. And that was kind of a bitter bitter pill to swallow. And sometimes when you experience, you know, not quite getting what you want, when you need to be tougher, you are. And she was really tough this year, especially when she needed to be at NCAAs and then again at Canadian trials. So I think it's a bit of a process. I know she can talk to her mom and dad about stuff that most people can't talk to, but sometimes that's not easy to do. You know, sometimes you, you kind of want to get away from that. But they're, they're, they're as supportive as they could be, and they couldn't be more proud of her. And I know they're, they're all pretty happy about the opportunity she has. Anything else for Coach Lewis? How about for you yourself, just being a coach on this team? I mean, not <clears throat> from swimming and, and not qualifying, you know, a couple decades ago, has that, has that in any way been a driving force for you as a coach to kind of get to this point or get people to this point? You know, I, I, I mostly focus on the swimmers, you know, like, co for example, you know, as we had kids get ready to, to do stuff, I was, I was pretty stressed out, you know, be it watching Ollie's results on the, on the, the phone or, Ken, you know, Kennedy's, you know, on the computer, and then just Cody Miller was the first one to qualify from this, this group that just went to Omaha, and uh, I get sick to my stomach for stuff like that, but I was, I was shocked that you know, that I was fortunate enough to get picked, but it's, it's really a credit to them. You know, it's the, it's the athletes that, that make it possible to be a coach on a national team. And it's also the coaches you have in your, in your program. And we just, we just have a really, really good family right now of, of coaches, of, of kids on the team, you know, and even kids on the team that, that help these kids. Like, you know, Lily's racing guys, and those guys played a huge role in helping her. You know, as 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 the whole team has for everybody else in there. So, it's it's an honor, one that I, I wasn't sure ever would come, but you know I'm gonna enjoy it and and try to have the best time possible in Rio. And I'm responsible for six total athletes, three of which are Indiana kids, and then three from other schools. And I'm gonna coach them up like they were my own. How'd you find out? I uh, just found out Saturday night. So what they do is they split the team up and try to put people, you know, with uh, good situations. So, you know, that kind of makes sense. And they, they also listen to the personal coaches. The personal coach may say, hey, I want my swimmer with so-and-so because it, it could be a good fit. So it, it's a little bit of a political process, but you want, if you don't have a coach there, you want them to feel as comfortable as possible. And that's why it's really important, you know, if you can have a coach that really knows you or, you know, that's from your your university or your club team, that's a huge advantage. And, uh, you know, the number of kids we qualified and, and where they rank in the world played a huge role in, in me having an opportunity. So I thank them. W without them, it doesn't happen. I'm 
curious, how big a potential impact could this have in terms of recruiting? Well, it's already had a good impact because kids that, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've met with some kids at trials when, when the swimming was done, and they were talking to me when, when they hadn't returned an email, nothing. And they were like, well, you guys swam pretty well. I want to talk to you guys now. And same thing with phone calls. So I think it could have a real positive effect because uh, people want to swim with successful people. And, you know, this was one of the things we had not done. It, it's have significant Olympians. And, you know, the, the, the next thing is to go down to Rio and do a good job, you know, for Egypt or Canada or the U.S. or Slovenia, you know, wherever we're representing, Australia in James's case. So we want to go down there. I, t I talked to Drew Johansson, and I said, you know, any advice, Drew? And he goes, do better in Rio. You know, so it's, it's pretty simple advice, but I'll take it. You mentioned the impact of the coaches on this team, um, especially with Dennis Dale. How big of an impact has he had on the, on the sprinters on this team? Huge impact. Um, you know, we asked Dennis to come down here after um, being in Minneapolis uh, at a northern university for a long, you know, for 30 plus years of his career. And it was really hard for a guy, you know, 70 years old to do that. But, you know, Ali would not be here without him. And he'd be the first guy to say that. Uh, he's meant the world to Ollie and the rest of the sprinters, and um, he's done exactly what you would have hoped, which is, you know, made us relevant in, in sprint freestyle, and uh, we got one, one more year with Dennis, and we're going to enjoy it to its fullest. Thank you, Coach Lewis. Thank you. Thank you.